Hey gang, are you a business to business marketer? If so, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long. Your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you're going to have direct access to and build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior-level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You'll also be able to drive results with targeting and measurement tools built specifically for B2B, and they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn Ads is also ranked number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Folks, for me... LinkedIn is the number one place I go when I want to reach decision makers. You should too. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode of Winfluence. So the idea is that we want to help you drive more sales, reduce friction for content delivery, and then really start to really understand who who your top fans are through engagement. We define engagement as actual comments. We want people commenting. That should be your end goal, not the vanity metrics of likes and impressions and reach. The real, I think, relationships begin when people start engaging with you, either positive or negative. There's a lot to learn from both sides. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. If you don't know the importance of acquiring and leveraging first-party data in marketing yet, let me give you a quick recap. Consumers generally do not want companies like ours, or any company for that matter, capturing and using their data without their explicit permission. Regulatory guidance like GDPR in Europe and consumer-focused policy trends like not allowing third-party cookies to scrape data from website users are responding to that desire. Soon, places like Google that not only allow the use of third-party data for targeting but actually helps you capture it too are going to sunset that ability. Other browser makers like Apple with its Safari browser and seemingly ubiquitous iOS mobile devices have long been anti-cookie, at least so far as to give consumers clear access to prevent the data from being captured. What that means is within a year or two, the only data you'll likely be able to use for audience targeting and data insights will be that you capture yourself first-party data direct from your consumers. Now, in general, this is a good thing. It respects consumer privacy. It allows them to control or choose what to give you and what to not. It holds us accountable on the marketing side and makes us honest, prevents some marketers from spinning out of control and becoming creepy. But that doesn't change the fact that it makes it harder for companies to get first-party information to better inform their marketing. Well, I happened to use a clever little app recently to help run a ticket giveaway on Instagram. It allowed me to have my Instagram followers come to a landing page where they could give me their email address, their birthday, and other pieces of information about them that I needed, and they gave it to me voluntarily. First party data. The light bulb went off. This is how we get to know our social followers and even customers better. We incentivize them to give us that information we need voluntarily. Excited the prospects of making this happen more regularly, I thought I'd invite the people behind that app to come talk about it. The app is called Stampede Social. Jeff Dwoskin is one of the founders and people behind it. Jeff dropped in to talk about the tool, what it does, and how it helps solve the third-party data problem for brands. But he also has some big brand experience heading up digital customer engagement for Little Caesars and such. So we had a good time talking about marketing in general. You'll hear more about how to solve for the big data issue, but also learn a few more things today as we chat with Jeff on Winfluence. Speaking of dealing with big issues, our presenting sponsor, Scipio.ai, helps solve for many of them, too. I loved what they were doing so much, I joined the company as executive vice president for marketing last month. 
Scipio.ai is a community commerce platform. It has a family of apps that helps you drive commerce through your own community. One of those apps taps into a big theme for 2023 for brands and creators, and that is efficiency. Whether you're a brand or creator, you probably spend a lot of time writing and rewriting captions for social media content. You also have to make sure that content will perform well by keeping up with the trends across social media, right? Our gift to you is a solution called Vibe Check. Think of it as an AI content generator, but with an extra brain for optimizing social media posts and predicting success. Tell Vibe Check the idea of your post or even campaign. Give it a call to action, the tone of voice you prefer, and the length of the word count. With the push of a button, you will have a library of smart content recommendations with predictive analysis of how that post will perform. VibeCheck's powerful generative AI engine digs into the big data of over 140 million social media users, posts, images, and videos. It mines that data for deep learning insights to give you not just content, but content that will perform. That makes it very different from other AI content generators out there. Now, if you know me, you know I'm not a fan of automation and content creation. It takes the humanity out of it. But not only is the generative AI algorithm at Scipio.ai very good, but that's actually not the point of the tool. VibeCheck produces a ton of great content simply to save you writing time. You still need to review and edit it, make sure it's perfect. But it gets you 90% of the way there, which saves you time and makes your job more efficient. Scipio.ai wants to give you that power and time as a holiday gift. Sign up for a two-week free trial, no credit card required. Go to jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck, V-I-B-E-C-H-E-C-K, jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck, and start creating all the captions and content you need with the click of a button. Free for two weeks, just see if you like it. I'm betting you will jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck. Seriously, this will change your game if you write a lot or have a lot of clients that you need to write for. jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck. Let's solve for that pesky third-party data problem and get to know our audiences a lot better with their permission. Jeff Dwoskin of Stampede Social is next on Winfluence. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, You look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. Jeff, I certainly want to get into Stampede Social and what problems it solves and what you solve for brands, agencies, and creators. But take us back a bit. You were once upon a time, I think, the lead for digital strategy and later customer engagement at Little Caesars. So you've got some big brand experience in there. Take us through your time with the Pizza Pizza. What'd you learn from that experience? That was an amazing experience. When I got there, they had just started expanding their e-commerce because they're amazing marketers. And so they had everyone going into the stores and paying $5 for hot and ready. And I think even like some of their digital advertising made fun of e-commerce. But at some point they realized, oh, you know, we need to do that. And I had joined the team and helped then start building out the app from just a kind of a store locator to the you know fully functioned e-commerce and launches in full United States and Canada. And then uh, that was an amazing experience because you one cool thing about Little Caesars, you spend time in stores. You actually like go there. I mean, you work. I make yeah. pizza. I made crazy bread. Someone out there might have <laughs> eaten crazy bread that I made. And it's it really kind of puts you in touch. It connects you with everything that you're doing. So it's it's an amazing process that they put you through. And so that then helps you understand who you're building it for because mm-hmm. w- the lives we were impacting weren't just the people getting the pizza so they could get their pizza easier, but the stores and operations and making sure they understood because this was a a radical change for them. So it was very interesting from a million different angles. It was a great experience. And then I've been a stand-up comedian for, you know, 20 years. And so I was really into social media. And at some point, 
moved over to their marketing team. Not many people go from IT product <laughs> strategy to marketing, but then I spent a year there with their social and doing campaigns. And we did a lot of TikTok campaigns and, you know, working with their agencies. And I, I remember what you call it, the quarterback when we did the Super Bowl ad that year. And so I yeah. ran the war room. So that was fun during the actual game. So great experience, really great experience. You know, I would think in some instances and in some, you know, corporate structures, having a stand-up comedian have the finger on the red button in, in responding to people on social media would be a really dangerous thing to do. But then again, for some brands, it's actually probably really cool and right on brand. So was was that ever a discussion? You know, I've always been in the corporate world, but I've also been a comedian at the same time. And so I always understood the balance, yeah. you know, at Little Caesars, I was in marketing. I was the guy that worked with legal. So I wasn't always the most popular person. <laughs> so, so I, I knew that, you know, there's a certain balance there and the most free I ever got was actually before I went into marketing where there was a little back and forth squirmish and I helped them write some, some zingers back and forth. And so, but that was that, I mean, it was, they're pretty, you know, they're a fun brand that you know, yeah. can see that in all the posts and the commercials that they do. But, you know, they, everyone, most brands know, I think, know how to draw the line appropriately. Not yeah. everyone can be Wendy's. Yeah, exactly. And to be honest with you, I know a couple of actual comedians who their base, you know, sort of side hustle or I guess their main hustle to make money while they build their comedy career is doing social content for people because they find brands that you know, need that personality, need that flavor, you know, maybe you're a little edgy, maybe not because comedians don't have to be edgy, but at the same time, it's interesting how those two careers can kind of overlap for folks. So take us through the journey from Little Caesars to now you're on the startup side, building a tool for folks. How'd you get there? I've always been entrepreneurial throughout my entire career. In the late nineties, I had one of the very first web development companies in the United States that we had sold to a large company called US Web, who then went public. And so uh, entrepreneurism has always been in my blood. The pivot to where I went after Little Caesars with Stampede Social, it grew from some other projects that we had done. We had done some stuff on Twitter and we still do it today, but it called Hashtag Roundup where we created hashtags and we had an app and it was all you know, people would play the same hashtag at the same time. We would, we've trended over 8,000 hashtags mm. over the last five years or so and many worldwide as well. So, you know, we'd work with brands as well to help them kind of get some activity going on Twitter. And then we moved into more Instagram. A lot of it was based on some of the experiences I had working with agencies and doing campaigns while I was at Little Caesars in conjunction with all of the other background that I had, all this eclectic background, six years in promotion, six years in customer service, you know, <laughs> it all kind of comes together. And so we built Stampede Social to be a real powerful tool for people that use Instagram. There was a lot of kind of things about Instagram that just made it and make it, I think, difficult to use, but it's such a great platform. Yeah. And that's where I guess the solutions started to come to light for you for Stampede Social. So tell us a little bit about what Stampede Social does. You reached out to me just for context. You reached out to me on LinkedIn about the platform. I had a very specific need with a content client I was working with. I needed to run a ticket giveaway for an event. And as you were telling me about the platform, I saw it as something worth trying. So you and I built that out together. It ran very seamlessly, which is why I thought it'd be good to share by having you on. So give us kind of the elevator pitch explanation of what Stampede Social does. Stampede Social is a campaign performance booster tool. It bolts on to whatever you have. So any kind of uh, agencies you work with, any tools you already have, inbox management, we just kind of bolt on. We're the flip side of that coin. We don't help you schedule it or inbox manage, but once it's live, we help you actually take advantage of the platform in a very unique way. And hopefully we then inspire you to be more creative, mm -hmm. to create things that you maybe wouldn't have done as often because of the difficulty of the actual management and measurement and execution of Instagram campaigns, right? Right. So the idea is that we want to help you drive more sales, reduce friction for content delivery, and then really start to really understand who your top fans are 
through engagement. And we define engagement as actual comments. Mm -hmm. We want people commenting. That should be your end goal, not the vanity metrics of likes and right. impressions and reach. The real, I think, relationships begin when people start engaging with you, either positive or negative. There's a lot to learn from both sides. Right. So there are three or four things for me when I hear all that. And of course, I have the added advantage of having used the tool too. But let's start with the attention getter. I think for most people who are running social media content, the folks on the brand or agency side, you can use a hashtag, inspire your audience to use that hashtag in a comment or a DM on Instagram. And that triggers an automatic response that can be anything. It could be a link to a landing page, it could be a piece of content a downloadable asset, a sign-up form, a product page, whatever. So for the community manager or brand or agency marketer out there, think about no more link in bio bullshit. And you are hopefully finding, as Jeff said, creative ways to incentivize your audience to engage with your content on Instagram. So more efficient paths to calls to action for the audience, better engagement rates, not to mention you're also opening a more direct line of communication with individual fans and followers. So Jeff, is that piece of this what sells this thing to most people? That is the cherry on top, yes. And then not only does that link get delivered automatically, right, through a live event, a story, it could be a post, a reel, or a direct DM, that link is then has built in attribution, right? Everyone's always talking about, we send people over, but they're not, we're not getting the right attribution. They're, we're not getting credit for what we're sending over. So this solves that in many ways. When I send you a link through the system, I know that link went to Jason. I know it came from, you know, Stampede Social or whatever the brand is. I know why I sent it to you. I know what post or DM you requested it from, I know the time of day you did it. And when I send that over to a registration form, which could be a, a sweeps entry, mailing list, anything, the idea is that we're driving it to collect first party data. That's the ultimate reason that the tool exists is to help you collect your first party data. But we, get, we pass over a transaction ID. So now not only would I know that Jason Falls got the link, I know if he clicked on it and if he clicked on it, I can match up the data and know if he actually registered as well. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing about that is, is it's no longer an invisible event, right? So if you just click on a link in bio or just an open URL, and by that I just mean jasonfalls.com versus right. the one we would send, no, you don't know if anything occurred. Now we can tell you that it occurred and then you can track it down the path as well. And so it opens up so much more information and trackable data. And everything I just mentioned it's all collected in a report on the fly, like a button, download it. You know exactly who's been requesting. You know exactly who's commenting on your posts. It's all right there. Understand who your top engagers are. It's really, really a lot of power to suddenly be in the hands of the community managers. Very true. Well, as Jeff said, there is a huge and I think more important strength to using Stampede Social I want to talk about first-party data, but we're going to do that after the break. Back with Jeff Dwoskin of Stampede Social after this. Hey there, it's Jason with the Marketing Podcast Network. Real quick, I want to make sure you know that the world's leading B2B marketing expo is returning to the Los Angeles Convention Center on March 21st and 22nd. It's high time we got back together to learn, see the latest technologies and solutions, and network, right? Join thousands of marketing professionals just like you to learn from over 250 industry expert speakers, educational masterclasses, and over 300 exhibitors. And this year, your ticket also gets you into the Sales Innovation Expo and the Marketing and Advertising Expo. So it's like three conferences in one. It's March 21st and 22nd at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Go to b2bmarketingexpo.us to register. That's b2bmarketingexpo.us. The Marketing Podcast Network is a proud partner of the B2B Marketing Expo for 2023. We'll see you in L.A. Welcome back to Winfluence, talking to Jeff Dwoskin of Stampede Social. It's an easy way to drive better engagement and more effective calls to action to drive reactions, responses, conversions, provide easier paths to content for your Instagram followers. We talked about those benefits before the break, but the other huge benefit that Jeff touched on very briefly that I want to go far more in depth with 
is employing a tool like Stampede Social to captivate, capture first party data. Jeff, tell us again, more specifically, how Stampede Social makes that easy to do. Absolutely. So the idea is we need to get links to our fans and customers so to drive them wherever we want to drive them, right? So we, first we start by creating these engaging events. We make it real easy. Don't leave this post. Don't go to a link. Go to, you know, just reply below, comment below. We'll send you the link. It's all white glove service from the brand's point of view. It's all automated. And then when they click on that, they can go to any registration page or a data collection form that you set up. You can securely collect your own PI data. And ultimately, that's what we want to do. Email still king. We want to get the email. We want to get people signed up for mailing lists. We want to understand who people are. Sign them up for our loyalty program. Get them a coupon. Anything you want. There's a million different things to do. And you know that's this is just a real easy way to get them there. The problem is you're we're always asking too much of people. You know, click, 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 click. Mm-hmm. It's just make we want to make it easy, and that's what we put this system together. But not only made it easy, it's now trackable. So now everyone that does request the link, if you notice they don't click on it. You can visit their profile. You now have a list of everyone that was interested in you. So basically, you have a, a lead list of people that you can now engage with. You don't have to follow up specifically with them and go, hey, why didn't you, uh, you know, fill that out? But on socials, a like goes a long way. A comment on one of their posts, it's just innocuous, goes a long way. So there's ways to rewarm up a lead beyond just following up. If you know they clicked on it, you can respond because it's now in your DM. Yep. It's not an invisible event. They didn't just click the random link in bio and you have no idea if it happened or not. Yep. You start to know now. In a way, it's a lead generator and it kind of gives you that whole throughput. Yeah. And if you are you know, doing complex things with data, which, you know, as you have the resources and the personnel and the disciplines and whatnot within your organization to do it, you can combine the data that you get from something like Stampede Social along with, let's say, your, you know, marketing automation system. And you can say, hey, to anyone who has responded to more than three of our Instagrams in the last three weeks, send them this, you know, series of emails, right? So you're now building in more of that automation that helps bring people closer to you, converting, etc. So just to give everybody a little bit more context around how I used Stampede Social a few weeks back. I asked people to comment on an Instagram video about a free ticket giveaway. Anyone who did, they were sent an auto DM on Instagram with a message and a link that was something like, hey, thanks for the interest in the free tickets. Fill out the form here. And then we inserted a link to a landing page with an entry form. So my Instagram followers and fans gave me that that click through and wanted to enter this sweepstakes to win these tickets. They gave me their name. They gave me their email address. They gave me their Instagram handle. They gave me their date of birth. Technically, I had none of that information other than the Instagram handle before this giveaway. Now, I have their name. I have their email. I know what their date of birth is because it was a bourbon-related event, so we had to ask for the date of birth. I put a checkbox on the form to opt them into the email newsletter for the event. Most people did opt in. We didn't force it on them, so most people took the time to say, yes, I want more information about this event. So for most of you out there who have a nice following on Instagram, think about how many of your followers you know that information about. It's pretty powerful stuff. So Jeff, how do you recommend that a brand uses Stampede Social? And then what could they potentially do with all this first-party opted-in data? Well, first, I mean, the opportunities of what you can do with this system are, you know, limitless, right? It's to the level of creativity. But at a high level, what we make it real easy to do is one, like you mentioned, drive registrations for giveaways. Our system collects comments as databases on the fly, searchable databases in context to the post. So if you like doing one of those giveaways where you just say comment below and you're just trying to kind of just get some action going on your site, hey, comment below, tag this person, use it. We uh, make that super easy. There's no scraping involved, nothing, because the data is just collected right there. And we even built in a button where you can dedupe and randomize it and it drops down uh, what you can use as a giveaway winner's list, top-down giveaway winner's list. So we make UGC tracking, user-generated content tracking, simple. We have one conference that used it and you know collected hundreds of things with multiple hashtags all going. 
the nice thing, the interesting thing about Instagram is it's easy to put any of these campaigns in place, right? It's easy to start a UGC campaign. Hey, use this hashtag and tag us. But then there's no great way to actually understand how many posts and, and have a database of everything that's going on and have it all collected. Or it's easy to say, yes, comment below and, and you'll be entered to win. And next thing you know, you have a thousand comments and no way to get to them in an mm-hmm. easy way, right? So we solved all of that on top of the link and bio issue. The other cool thing is this works when you go live on Instagram and we collect all those comments for you too. So as you're going live, if you've got comments flying in, they're into our database real time. So you can actually Mm -hmm. be using that database and our user interface to just comment to people and move those comments out of the way as you address people to make it real easy. You can also do the same call to actions. Like Jason could have gone live in his example earlier and said, comment you know, below, hashtag bourbon, and I'll send you a DM. So you could be selling a product or a book, and it goes right wherever you want it to go, right? To drive sales or awareness or registrations. So a lot of really cool things right out of the bat. What you do with the data, that's between you and your... No. <laughs> but once you have email addresses, you know, you become extremely more powerful. You know, I still know every company that I've worked with and I'm aware of today, still has full teams that leverage email nonstop. And let's face it, with the craziness that goes on with some of these social media platforms, it could be one day it's there and the next day it's not. You know, It's yeah. not even that the platform has to go away. You can be suddenly shut down or limited in your reach. True. And email is always going to be king. So the more we can create engagements and reasons for people to give us their email, We don't have to count on the fact that there just happens to be there on social media at the time we happen to be posting, right? Because a lot of these have a certain life expectancy online. With mail and email, it just makes it so much easier to constantly be marketing to the people we need to hear our message. And if you are a creator, a content creator out there, an influencer on your podcast app, hit rewind 30 seconds a couple of times and listen to that again. Because what he's saying is, You don't, and this is something that, you know, I've been jumping up and down and preaching about here on this show for a long time. You need to own your audience as well as your content, which means you need to have a blog, an email newsletter, a podcast. You need to have something where you are collecting that data and you have a direct connection to the audience because as Jeff inferred, you could, you know, be shut down on these social networks. You and many people have there. I can't count how many people I see on TikTok that say, here's my backup TikTok account in case they shut me down. Maybe that's because I'm looking at more questionable content than other people, but whatever. At the same time, though, you need to own that direct connection with your consumer. And this is a great way to say, okay, I've got all these followers on these social networks. Let's start with Instagram. How do I get them over so that I also have their email address? And this is a way to do that. The other thing that's really fantastic about something like Stampede Social for me is that you're not doing anything tricky or unsavory to get this data from your followers. You're simply coming up with a creative reason to give that information to you. So the onus is on you to come up with the reason, but as long as you're giving them an above board motivation to want to come through and give you their information, Maybe it's to register for free tickets to something. Maybe it's downloading a white paper or an NFT. Maybe it's to buy a product or get a discount coupon. It might even be that you want to give your Instagram audience, always mobile and on the go, an easy link to something like a podcast episode. So, Jeff, you started down this road with the Instagram Live. Why don't we give them a live example? We can use Stampede Social on this podcast episode right now, right? That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, head over to, is it at Jason Falls? On yeah, Instagram? I'm at Jason Falls on Instagram. So find me there. What would be an easy one? Let's do Stampede. Hashtag Stampede. That's easy to remember. Hashtag Stampede. Yeah. <laughs> Not the word hashtag. See, that's where it gets confusing. You got to always pick the right words too. So, right. you know. <laughs> so use the hashtag symbol and Stampede. Send me a message on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. Because then you can send me the DM. But follow me on Instagram and send me hashtag stampede. And by the time this episode is live, Jeff and I'll have it set up to where you'll get a link invitation to the show notes page for this episode, where you can get the links to Stampede Social, to Jeff on LinkedIn, all the different links that we put in the show notes. You'll find them easier. And remembering hashtag stampede 
and Jason falls on Instagram is a lot easier than remembering. Go to www.blah, right? So the interesting thing we found as we kind of dug into the data is people are clicking on the links. It's like 120% click through. It's like, because what's nice about it is if you think about on social media, when you see a post that you like and you hit save or you send it to yourself or, you know, and then I never know where I've saved so many articles on LinkedIn and I have no idea where that save button <laughs> goes, <laughs> <laughs> but I wish that wasn't true, but it's, it kind of is. But the interesting thing with the way Stampede Social works and sending you the DMs with the links, it sort of just becomes your to-do list. You know where it is. You don't have to worry about finding that post later or digging through the likes that you did to see where that post was. It's just right there for you. And, you know, you can always kind of go back to it, which is really nice. Right. So we've already given you the call to action for this episode. You know, follow me on Instagram and DM me hashtag stampede and you're going to get links and everything in the show notes. But Jeff, if people want the more traditional call to action here, if they want to sign up for Stampede Social or they want to know more, tell them where to go, how they connect with you on the interwebs. Absolutely. Head over to stampede.social. That's our website and has all the great information. You can schedule a meeting there with me. I'd love to do a demo for you. And you can also email me at jeff at J-E-F-F at stampede.social. Very nice. And we'll, on that hashtag stampede, if you send me that on Instagram, you'll get all those links on the show notes as well as obviously the embeds of this episode so that you can play it again if you want to. And uh, we'll make sure we have links to Jeff's LinkedIn and all that good stuff so you can connect with him there. Jeff, thanks a lot, man. This was this is super useful. And uh, I'm glad you pitched this to me. I'm glad I used it and found it. And I have a feeling I'm going to be using it a lot more. Jason, it's been a pleasure. It's awesome. Thank you for having me on your show. Much appreciated. Thanks. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Simple in the end, right? Just give your audience a reason to give you the information you need, and then suddenly no more third-party cookies doesn't look quite as daunting. Smart stuff there from Jeff and Stampede Social. Check them out at stampede.social, or as we talked about in the interview, hit me up on Instagram and either DM or comment on the post about this episode with the hashtag stampede. You'll see it in action as that will take you to the show notes page. I'll also drop a special email capture there so you can easily join my newsletter to follow through on that first party data thing on my end. And don't worry, I send my newsletter every four to six weeks. Try not to clutter your inbox just when I have something good to share. Hashtag Stampede on Instagram. Find me, drop it, see it in action. And one note, the Stampede social thing will stay live for about four weeks. So if you hear this episode past February of 2023. It probably won't work, but reach out to me. I'll make sure you get where you need to go. Also, don't forget to completely change the way you produce social media content for the better. Get Vibe Check from Scipio.ai. A two-week free trial, no credit card required, awaits you at jasonfalls.co slash vibecheck. And to help us create a bigger and better vibe here on the show, tell someone who might want to know more about influence marketing about this podcast. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on them all. Also, you can help make a future episode of Winfluence Awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners and presented by Scipio.ai. The technical production is by MPN Studios. Winfluence airs along MPN, the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. 
Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Joe Singer and Tom Stallings host a great podcast called Take a Breath. Joe, tell us what you talk about on the show. Yeah, so Take a Breath is a podcast for people who are really trying to build something valuable in their lives, whether it's a business or a marriage or whatever it is you're trying to do. We help you with some hacks to build your best life. Wow. Where can people subscribe? You could find us on marketingpodcasts.net as well as mergeanalytics.com. And you can also find us on LinkedIn and YouTube. And wherever you get your podcasts. So go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.